Last fall, when Gander Outdoors was closing a lot of their stores, I happened to find this for about 40% off, so I paid not much more than $200 for it. And I just put it in the RV and just sat over the winter, and I had planned on getting this out a little bit sooner, but how everything has been delayed this year in 2020, I didn't get around to it quite yet. So let's open it up and see how this will work in our RV. What this is is a 4G LTE hotspot plus a Wi-Fi extender. Now you can get this in just the Wi-Fi extender version only, but this is the deluxe model that has both. Now of course 5G is the latest, but you know you're in a camping environment, 5G may not be available where you're at, and do you really need that high speed of an internet access? And the way the box opens up is kind of strange. It kind of opens from the bottom and it just kind of folds out as a clamshell. I've known about this product for some time and this is supposed to go on the roof of your RV and the only thing going inside is just a power cord. And one thing I really don't like is that the SIM card is in a little port here and I don't know how they would do it differently but it would have been nice if this was inside somewhere. That means if you want to change a SIM card you're going to have to climb out onto the roof. On the other hand, how often are you going to have to do that? And you get a bag of parts with another cable and this connector mates with this one. Then you have a gland that fits on the roof so that the cable can go through. And a couple bags of hardware and on off switch with a bezel. And a couple more screws and connectors. In addition to the WineGuard data plan, you also have an AT&T or Verizon data plan capability depending on the SIM card you use. And to obtain service from another provider, your device should have an IMEI number, which can be found either on the device itself, the owner's manual, or even the box that the device came in. The IMEI is sort of like a phone number, and it uniquely identifies your device to the cellular system. I then contacted Verizon and gave them my IMEI number. They recognized the number as valid, but they said it's not compatible with their system, so they can't help me. I then contacted WineGuard. They directed me to this Verizon web page. You can enter your IMEI number and Verizon will tell you whether or not that's compatible with their system. So let's enter my IMEI number. Here's the result. So why did I know this was going to happen? You know, sometimes corporate America, the bureaucracy is just as bad as the government. A big goose egg to Verizon. And what about AT&T? AT&T used to have a very good plan. They had unlimited data for 30 bucks a month. A lot of RVers bought it. However, in mid-January 2020, AT&T discontinued that service. And now you have to pay a higher rate. The 2GO system is similar to the Connect 2.0, except that originally it would only work with AT&T. And to their credit, WineGuard modified the 2GO system so that it will work with the WineGuard network service, AT&T, and hopefully Verizon. But I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. So at this point, I'm going to go with the WineGuard Freedom Go plan because it's going to be the easiest to get going. And it is pay as you go by month. And here are the rates as of the publication of this video. And one advantage of this perhaps is that it is U.S. and Canada. And you can see that for U.S. and Canada, 10 gig a month is $80. But for U.S. only, it's $59. So that's not too bad. I'm currently using this ZTE mobile hotspot on the Straight Talk service. And it worked well enough, and you can see the data plans, and $25 for 2 gigs, that's not very good. And it's U.S. coverage only. Compare that to the WineGuard $35 plan for 3 gig with U.S. and Canada. Before I mount the antenna on the roof permanently, I'm going to try two or three internal locations inside the RV plus one external location and just compare the differences in signals from one location to another. And since I have a plywood roof with a TPO membrane over the top of it, it should be transparent to RF energy, and so I shouldn't really get any signal attenuation from being inside. However, there is aluminum in the sidewall, so that could make a difference in the precise location. And then I'm going to try it outside on top of the satellite mass that I made for the ladder mount. For example, this cabinet at the rear of the coach, the antenna just fits inside. And for now, I simply wired this to an accessory outlet, and I have an accessory outlet up here that I can just plug that in for power. 
I'm not really going to go over the step-by-step -step instructions on how to get connected initially because it's pretty well covered in the manual and it even includes sample screens on what it should look like and I found it to be pretty accurate. Not really any issues. However, it did recommend to update the software, which I did, and so that's the only real thing that we had to do. And I did sign up for the 10 gigabit plan for one month just to see how it works. And the device looks like a web page, so basically you just migrate to the web page to make any changes. And it does have a signal strength meter, and setting inside the cabinet, I show a 96% signal strength, so that's pretty good. And next, I put the antenna on top of the hutch, so we'll try it there. This is about the center of the coach, front to back and side to side. So this has minimum interference between any aluminum structure on the sides of the RV. And the console says that here we have a 64% signal strength. So this definitely is not as good as in the back cabinet. And I've said it before, a low power supply such as this with a accessory outlet is great to have. And I also have a little DC power meter and we're looking at around 300 milliamp years about four watts or so. So the WineGuard Connect 2 does not take a whole lot of juice. I also wanted to try in the headboard above the bed in the front of the RV because we have advantage of that cap, which is made out of fiberglass and it's gonna be completely transparent. However, the antenna is just too big to fit in the cabinet. And in the last test, I put the antenna on my satellite mast that I custom built. I'm getting 100% signal, which I'm even kind of surprised that it's that strong. It's not much stronger than the inside first location, so I think at least for now that's where it's going to be. So I'm going to call this project done, at least for now, and I will do a long-term review if I see any differences. But we're going to try it for a while and see how it works.